get lost in the woods and you run out of food, you can't just eat any random plant, right? Mm. Most of them will make you very sick or even kill you. And that's why, and that, and that's why we call most plants on earth inedible, right? Correct. So it's edible, inedible. Why is it inedible? Well, because it has poisons. It has poisons that will kill you. Well, you know, people that smoke and drink, well, they don't die that day. Well, obviously smoking and drinking, but well, that's not poison then. Right. But that's the same argument they make about spinach. Right. They say, well, spinach, I had a spinach salad the other day. I didn't die. I'm like, yeah, right. Right. But you didn't <laughs> die when you smoked a pack of cigarettes either. Yeah, true. You didn't die when you had a bottle of whiskey either. But over the years, this will build up and build up the harm and the damage to your body. And we can deal with some of it. Right. Mm -hmm. But we're eating more and more and more of this stuff, especially because people are saying you need to go plant based. And so we're, we're inundating ourselves with even more and our bodies aren't aren't being able to handle it very well. Um, oxalates are a good example of this. We don't, we can't really clear these things. We, uh, we have a number of different ways, uh, you know, that, that people, when they've been poor and they haven't been able to access meat as much as, as like the, the more wealthy classes, they have figured out ways of using plants and detoxifying them a bit more, making them more bioavailable in their nutrient supply. And, um, but not all things can be detoxified. So like oxalates, you can't really cook them out. You can't really detoxify these things. What is an oxalate? Oxalate is a, uh, is a defense chemical. This is a defense that plants use to, to stop animals and insects from eating them and, okay. to, and to turn them, or even from pathogens and fungus and things like that, that would be invasive and try to eat the plant. And so they, they release these oxalates that are, that are toxic to other forms of life that, that uh, are trying to eat them. Right. So this can make oxalic acid. Some people have heard of that. I have, yes. So that you eat oxalate, that can actually turn into oxalic acid in your in your bloodstream. Yeah, okay. And it's also it can it can chelate different uh, minerals, mm -hmm. right? So that it sort of binds to them, basically irreversibly. We can't really break that bond. So it will bind magnesium, calcium, things like that, strip that out of your system, and so that actually strip out of your bones because you have to keep a, a level of calcium certain level of calcium in your serum and so your oxalates are stripping those out stripping those out stripping those out and then you have to pull from your bones which is a you know huge store of calcium in your body mm -hmm. in order to replace and and maintain your serum so you can get osteo osteopenic osteoporotic but that's decades down the line right so this is causing harm the whole time sets what about 75 percent of uh, kidney stones are calcium oxalate stones. And he's always oh, because too much calcium. No, it's too much oxalates, right? Oh, shit. Yeah. So, you know, we make some oxalates as sort of a breakdown product of different things, but it, I mean, it's like, like two milligrams or something like that from breakdown of protein, amino acids, and collagen and things like that. Vitamin C, people who take an abundance of vitamin C, that can actually turn into oxalates as well. Mm. Uh, but then the majority of where we get this stuff is in the plants that we eat because this is just a natural defense of the plant. So like um, it's, I mean, and we've known about the toxicity of oxalates in the medical literature for literally hundreds of years. And and, and going into the, the 1990s and 2000s, there have been peer reviewed publications of people going like, hey, we are not paying attention to oxalates as much as we should. This stuff is toxic. We really need to be aware of this. You know, we're calling things, you know, gout and things like that. I mean, like in, in the 1990s, you know, the um, uh, head of, I believe it was the head of the Journal of the American Medical Association, you know, published his own paper saying, hey, we're, we're talking about gout as only being these uric acid crystals, because that's not gout. Gout is actually has five different kinds of crystals that can form in your, in your joints, one of them being oxalate crystals. Right. And so you can have oxalate toxicity that forms into gout, but we just go, oh, gout, gout, gout. And then we call it pseudo gout, just anything that's not uric acid, oh, it has to be pseudo gout. So they sort of changed the names on that. But that was something that, that has been well described, well documented going back literally centuries and even to the point that we know how much is basically too much so if you get above 150 to 200 milligrams a day that's sort of too much that's, that's sort of overloading your system you're not really able to clear it that well is that from the actual plant material itself so 150 to 200 milligrams of plant material or is that for the actual ingest ox ingesting the oxalates yeah. o oxalates themselves yeah exactly so and how much do they like normally take up in plant material yeah, so it's it's different. Yeah, so you know some some plants are you know quite low in oxalates. You right. know, some don't not not all plants use oxalates, but most have like a little bit, and some just have a small amount. Is that like polyphenols and stuff? Like, is that what oxalates come from? So ox oxalates are their own. They're sort of, their own complete different yeah, chemical. Yeah, it, and yeah, exactly. And there's different kinds of oxalates, but like the you know they're, they're um, 
uh, their zone class. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so, uh, but there are certain things that have very high oxalates. So like sweet potato, I think like a, what is it? Like a cup of sweet potato has, you know, a couple hundred milligrams. Um, wow. Spinach, a cup of spinach has about 600 milligrams, right? So this is why like uh, Liam Hemsworth put himself in the hospital with three weeks of green smoothies, spinach smoothies, just every morning. And he's just tounding these things down. He gave himself a massive, massive kidney stone and obstruction. He had to get surgery to get this, this removed. And so he'd been, I think, plant-based for a while at that point, but then there's a certain period that he really ramped it up. And so there's that, that I, the idea in the oxalate, it, coming from the oxalate researchers that do a lot of research in this, and I'm just repeating their work, mm -hmm. is that you have this sort of background level of inundation. You're just sort of giving yourself just a bit more than your body can really handle, or maybe a lot more than your body can handle. And then all of a sudden you'll have a bam, a big burst of something like three weeks of just, you know, 3000 milligrams of oxalates a day yeah, yeah. in your, in your smoothies. And it just being, okay, that's too much. And you get overloaded and you get this toxicity, but it can cause uh, deposition of these oxalate crystals in your body and your tissue and even in your brain. And you can get uh, all sorts of different neurological issues because of that. And uh, yeah, and it can de deposit it in different tissues as well. And then your body seems to try to sequester this. If it can't clear it out through your kidneys, it can you start dam damaging your kidneys, but it can start uh, sequestering this in cells in your tissue to try to just get it out of your system. And so it actually forms like actual crystals and your body has to start, has to attack these things and break them down and they can start forming these, uh, these sort of in, in, in almost like they would with an infection or, or a, a foreign body or something like that. And uh, like a, it was called a granuloma. So they would just have this body of, of uh, defense cells sort of wrapped around this, trying to keep that away from the body. And so, you know, even years after you stop eating oxalates, you can get these things dripping into your system and, Whoa. and things like that. So it has a long-term effect. And so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty surprising, but you know, there are, there are these things and, and there's about plants make about a million different chemicals. Most of those are to defend themselves against attack. We're talking one singular plant. Or all, all of them. Yeah, okay, all of them. Yeah. That's a fucked on account. Yeah. <laughs> no, but each individual plant can, you know, easily do over a hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, yeah, wow. uh, I mean, coffee has 150,000 different chemicals in it. Is that a little key? Yeah, well, it's just, it's just something, you know, just to, just something I happened to happen to know about. So, you know, it just has, it has all these things. So we worry about caffeine, but it has thousands of other things yeah. that, that could potentially be of an issue. And so, you know, it's just something, it's just something to think about. And so I, you know, I was trying to say this and make this point point that this is how plants defend themselves mm. and, and you know historically humans really avoided plants unless we had to eat them we would eat meat you mm. know we were hunters for three million years and then the last twenty thousand years after the megafauna died off we had to go to more hunter gathering sort of things because we couldn't get like all those big yeah. yeah we couldn't get the big big game animals that we were used to mm. um especially here in australia mm. yeah fuck all game yeah like none we've got scrub balls up north and i'm pretty sure they're on the endangered list and you yeah. can't touch them anyway yeah. yeah it's not good yeah and you know and so if you just here in australia if you look at the records from the early explorers the european explorers that came here like in the 1600s 1700s mm. and the missionaries that were here around the same time there i mean there's books written about this and i've I, you know i've read them every time i come across one i always try to see if there's a chapter on the diet of the of the native uh, aborigines and there generally is and they just marvel at the fact that they're just eating meat they only eat meat and in different areas they were eating specific meat mm -hmm. now they would say that they knew what plants to use medicinally and they might use things uh they knew which plants they could eat safely to survive if they couldn't get meat but all the accounts that i've seen were all very clear that they said when they had meat, they ate meat, they didn't eat anything else. Mm. And in some areas like in Tasmania, they were actually even more specific. They only ate mollusks. And so they would go diving for abalone and things like Whoa, that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And the, uh, and the, the European, um, you know, sailors, they would like say, we, we even offered them like normal, like, you know, swimming fish. And they were like, yeah, no, no, no. thanks. We don't want it now. We don't want anything that moves. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, you know, and, and they sort of speculated, is this because they didn't, didn't want any of it? Or maybe they were just mistrustful of taking food from a stranger sort of thing, you know, but either way, what they noticed was that they were just eating mollusks. They were just eating the abalone and things like that. And they're quite specific for it.